Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Reviewing Comics with Alex Turbin. Uh, this week we're going to do uh, The Griffin, which is produced by Slave Labor Graphics. But before we get into that, I'm going to show you my uh, comics that sponsor the channel. And uh, it's, it's Random Access. Um, I produce these for Patreon. And uh, my patrons get the, a 12-page full-color um full-size comic book every month and uh you can get those at patreon.com look for alexander turban and uh or you could go to uh, alexanderturban.com and uh all my random access is there as long as well as the forlorn and sirene and mutandas and a whole bunch of other stuff that i've produced over the years <clears throat> um so let's get into the griffin um I did a whole bunch of um I did a whole bunch of takes yesterday and uh like 21 and uh they all failed miserably so uh hopefully I uh uh make some have some success today. Um I said a lot in those takes. Um trying to say kind of the same things because you want to say things uh as consistently as you can but um <clears throat> I guess I'm going to say this um overall is that um I like it. I, I like the, the comic and the idea and um, the artwork is very professional. Um, it was written by Dan Vado, who went on to do a lot of work for DC <clears throat> and he's actually the uh, the owner of Slave Labor and uh, creator and everything. <clears throat> and uh, the penciler is uh, Nor Norman Felshley. Hope I got that right. Uh, he also went on to do a bunch of work for DC, Batman and uh, JLA and Starcore. And the anchor was uh, Mike McCarthy. So, <clears throat> like I said, well, let's get into uh, what it's about first. Um, so the Griffin is about a guy who um, is graduating from high school. And um, and on the day he's going to graduate from high school, he's, um, he's given an opportunity to uh, buy these aliens to... Uh, go off onto another planet, another galaxy, another solar system, and become like a super soldier. Um, he's going to uh, get superpowers and uh, become one of their generals and fight in their wars and their battles and stuff. And uh, so the whole issue is about uh, that happening and then him returning, wanting to, to return to Earth 20 years later and uh, revisit his family and his friends and his, his loved ones that he left behind. Um, on the first page, uh, it explains all of that. I'm not sure if that's a good idea uh, because you're n you're not building any up any kind of tension for the reader to uh, see what's going to happen. But at the same time, a reader can read that on the at, at the the store that they're buying it <clears throat> and kind of know what they're getting into, um, as as well as perusing the art. It's kind of funny um, how people decide to uh, pick up a new comic at the the comic store. Use, I mean, it's obviously the cover grabs you, the cover, the name. <clears throat> and this is very professionally done and in nice colors. And, and uh, Norman does a lot, of, a lot of really good work in this. Um, all of his characters are, are nice and neat. And uh, he's got really clean and tight uh, artwork. Um, his narrative art is great. His, uh, I, I can tell exactly what's happening. I'm never, I never get lost. Uh, there's only one set of panels where I'm like, eh. Um, but it's a, it's a nice comic, nice, nicely drawn, nicely inked. Um, the characters well done. The, the expressions are, are nice. The only couple problems I have are his spaceships are, are a little on the plane side and the aliens are kind of, <clears throat> kind of goofy. I don't think it, uh, the goofiness lends itself enough to the, to the comic book, um, <clears throat> in the story. I, th I think they should be a little bit more um imperialistic i guess because he goes often to fight for the empire they call it the empire and corporation and stuff so so yeah so about his starships um i've been doing some spaceships lately and i kind of feel like um to work a, a good spaceship into a comic book you have to have one good establishing shot of the ship and really show exactly the shape of it and the detail like this is just it's the front 
and this is kind of just shows a little bit you don't see the whole ship i think jim lee is really good at at having establishing shots of spaceships because unlike a house or um you know a valley or whatever for an establishing shot you really want to know what the spaceship looks like i mean that's kind of an important part <clears throat> but on anyway the artwork is really nice um except for like i said the uh the aliens and the spaceships um the writing is really crisp and clean and uh you always know exactly what's going on you never get lost in the story the story's a little simple um but it uh that's okay because it's so nicely written. The dialogue is really nice. Uh, none of it's janky and, and none of it's kind of like dumb. Uh, it doesn't even feel like a CW show. I kind of base my dialogue on the CW for young adults, I guess. Um, and if a comic book is for young adults, then that's fine. But if it's not, which I don't kind of, kind of don't think this is, um then it's not really that great but so it's not really cw-ish um but the art's crisp the the dialogue and the writing and scripting is is really nice um the only problem is with the storyline is that i'm kind of not really like it's it's a good it's a good book i enjoy it um but i don't really i never i have one issue of this uh, black and white and it was later uh, reprinted it was this came out in 1988 and it was reprinted in 1991 by DC so that was kind of an, an interesting thing <clears throat> um, I don't believe I got the reprint either it just doesn't grab me it didn't grab me and um, for a black and white like this something has to really stick out in your mind to um, to make you want to either get them uh later on or uh hunt them down on the on the internet of course back in 1988 there wasn't any internet and it was very difficult to uh find indie comics on a consistent basis because the stores would either uh uh not sell enough of them to order in order to order more or they would uh, you know sell all of them out and so you really couldn't get a, a lot of them um i think kind of think that's what happened with uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is that a lot of people couldn't find them and uh, so that's why they kept, they just kept reprinting and reprinting them because um, they kept selling out. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I would say this is a good comic, not fantastic, um, even though I really kind of enjoy the art and I really kind of enjoy the, the story and the writing, uh, there was just not that big hook at the end or in the whole story that really kind of made me search out more of these books. Like I'm not going to ever go out of my way to buy more Griffins, even though I, I did enjoy it. So I would say it's a good solid six, six stars out of my 10 stars system. Uh, so um, let me go, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And um, if you enjoy this uh, video and my other videos, uh, consider subscribing and, uh, hitting that like button and, uh, and, and let me know what you think. I'll see you guys next week.